Hi, my name is Nikki Reynolds. I work at Tektronix, and today we're going to be looking at basic signal generation functions on the new AWG 4000. Now, the AWG 4000 is a three-in-one because it has the DDS capabilities and an AFG, um, and AWG's advanced functions, as well as a digital pattern generator. But today we'll mostly be looking at the basic modes in the AFG mode. As part of every demo, there is both the analysis and the generation side. So to help us with the analysis side, we're actually going to be using the MDO 4000C our mixed domain oscilloscope here at Tektronix. So all the signals we generate here will be showing on that screen. So we can go ahead and go into basic mode, which as you can see from the menu along the top gives us most of the basic functions we'll need during simple signal generation. We're going to start with the sine wave. So first we can activate the sine wave by pressing the button. We also make sure to turn on the channel out by pressing the on channel button here. You can see an immediate response on the MGO 4000 where our 1 MHz signal has already started. To change the frequency, we go to the menu, we select the frequency, and we can key in a new frequency using the side touchpad. You can see an immediate change again on this instrument. If we'd like to actually output not just one but two signals, we need only to go ahead and turn on the second. To be able to change the second, we can switch over by pressing the channel 2 button. Here we can also change the frequency to match, or if we want both frequencies to be the same, we choose the enter channel button and select that we want both frequencies to be equal. You can see here you can also align the phases and make equal the amplitudes of your signals by using this button. As you can see on the output, you have two in phase and equal frequency signals. Now this is pretty basic, so what we'd like to do now is maybe try to do some signal modulation. To modulate a signal, we can just go straight to the modulation scheme here. Now we can see both channels easily by pressing the channel 1, channel 2, or channel both button and choosing channel both here. As you can see on our modulation menu for channel 1, you can see the frequency as well as the AM frequency. You also have the option of changing what type of modulation here. We can change our source, whether it be internal or an external source that we could pull in from a trigger. So we actually do have to change the vertical resolution on our MDO and also be sure to switch your source to channel 2 so that it triggers on the second channel. As you can see, you can see the envelope of the modulated signal that looks very much like the modulated signal that we have on the AWG 4000. So next up, we're going to go ahead and generate a sweeping waveform. Now a sweeping sine wave signal is extremely useful for analog design engineers to generate a flat sine wave across a frequency between start and stop to test the frequency response of amplifiers and filters. So to switch the, we're going to switch the run mode to sweep. And we're actually going to change our start frequency to 1 megahertz. And our stop frequency is going to move to 100 megahertz. As you can see here, the swept waveform from this side to this side of the decreasing frequency. So the next user generated waveform we're going to create is a burst waveform. So we select burst from our list here. As you can see, we can change the settings for frequency. Another neat feature is if we press and would rather change the period instead of the frequency, we can change that here. Another neat feature is that instead of changing or typing in the full number, we can actually take, choose between nano, pico, micro, and milli here on the touchpad. So if I want a two nanosecond waveform, you can see it on the burst. So as you can see, there are a number of other ways that we can adjust this burst waveform. We can change its amplitude and offset, but if we actually go and look at just this channel's output, we can see options for trigger delay and interval and source. So the final waveform we're going to look at is actually something a bit more useful for those of you who are trying to build your own signals, um, but still want the 
ease of use of an AFG. It's the Arb Builder. So we can actually go here to the top and select to build an arbitrary builder and create a new waveform. So to go ahead and start our first new waveform, we're going to go to a new standard waveform and select under the function menu from a number of options you see here. We actually want to use the sync waveform here. If we want to preview what a sync waveform looks like here, we can go ahead and preview it. If we actually want to adjust things, we can go and either input our values here or select another option called draw. We can either use freehand to go ahead and freehandedly change the amplitudes of different parts of the signal or actually change specific parts like vertical. We can also edit it using the math function, which allows us to go in and actually pull waveforms from our library and use them to manipulate our selected waveform. So from draw, we can actually either do freehand or we can point draw. And we can actually use some sort of linear interpolation once we've picked our points. So by picking a point here, I can get some interpolation here or I can adjust the interpolation so that it's more linear. Once we're ready to output, I go to Communication tab and send it through channel 1. So as you can see, the waveform that we created on the AWG 4000 is output on the MDO 4000. I hope you found this basic signal generation how-to video useful.